Hello, hello, good afternoon to everyone, or maybe even morning, depending on where you are. Hope everyone is doing excellent today. I am just getting all the last minute setups done. Hmm. What else did I need to do? Oh, the pattern. That's right. Today we're going to do the wagon wheel stitch. And maybe even the fishbone stitch. Might do two. Yeah, we might do two. That'd be good. I feel like that would um, catch us up after yesterday's very slow going. Hmm, I'm just getting my colours sorted. Alright, we want to have that one. How's everyone doing today? Let me know in the comments. I got my needle. I got my floss. How much floss do I have on this bit? Ah, it's enough. Oh no, this will actually work well for something else. That's okay. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Please don't lose my voice again today. That would be annoying. Alrighty, we'll give it one more minute to let some more people join in. I have been very busy today, been getting lots done. Just going to close a couple of things on my computer so that it runs a bit smoother. Alright, let's do this. So, we're going to do these little circles here, which we're doing as wagon wheel, or it's also known as woven wheel stitch. To begin with, because these are so small, I recommend you, you don't stitch with all six to do the spokes. So, I'm actually going to pull out two strands. And first I'm going to stitch all of the spokes for all three of my little wagon wheels. This is not what you have to do uh, yourself if you don't want to. If you want to do them one at a time you can. If you want to do uh, the spokes in six strands you can. Uh, I just, I personally like doing the spokes as small as possible on any of my wagon wheels just because you know, it, it's less likely that they'll they'll show up but I've never had an issue with them being visible before it's just one of those things that I kinda got into the habit of doing alright so I've got two strands of floss on my ne my needle I've got my little quilters knot there now if you want, I just realized that I didn't I didn't draw it on my pattern, but if you want to, we are we are going to be doing a, a wagon wheel that's only three spokes. So if you want to, you can draw a little wire shape so that you know where to follow. By all means, I've just done it to show you guys like where I'm going to be going. So I'm going to come up and then go into the center and just follow each of these little lines to begin with. It's 
move that out of the way. When the wagon wheel is bigger, and when I say when, I mean when you use this on your own projects, so when it is bigger, like if it was, you know, kind of size, doing spokes that are tinier is not as, as needed, really. Alright, I'm going to flip over my work because I've just done all of those. Tie off my thread. Okay. Oh, I forgot to do something about this bit. <laughs> Oopsie. Shifting camera and phone. Alright. I don't need that two strand anymore. And I've got this cut of four now, so that's not very helpful. But I do need. I'm just confirming with my pattern because I'm pretty sure I remember it correctly. Yeah, we're going to use all six strands for this next bit. So you you just want to cut off you know, straight from the the bobbin or the skein or whatever. And I always pull out an arm's length. If you're on Twitch or YouTube, you can you could have seen me just stick my arm out. Then I measure like I hold the tip of the the floss and I measure all the way down to my armpit. If you do kind of any longer than that then you can get a really tired arm because you're pulling through so much floss. So yeah that's that's how I measure out mine. I'm gonna do my little quilters knot. One, two, just I'm only doing two wraps because this is six strands whereas before we've been doing two strands so that's we've already got like lots of strands of thread to create yeah a nice chunky knot there. Snip off the end. Stick that in the orchard. And then let's do the fun part. I'm gonna start with this one down here. We're gonna come up in the center of our wheel and then go under to begin with. Now, when we've only got three spokes, you to to backtrack. Sorry, with a wagon wheel stitch, you can do as many spokes. And when I say spokes, I mean um, these little lines here. Uh, you can do as many as you like. The usual number that people do for hand embroidery is five, uh, but you could do eleven, as long as you have an uh, odd amount of spokes then it will work perfectly fine. You cannot do an even number otherwise it will not work. Anyway to continue because we are doing three we need to make sure that we are not pulling our floss through too tight. So when it goes through the, the first couple ones are a little bit silly but they kind of form the foundation of the middle of the flower. And I haven't explained what I'm doing. So I'm going under and then I'm going clockwise around this one. So I went under and then I went over this one and then I went under this one, over this one, under this one. So now I've come under, I'm going to go over this one and then go under the next one. We're not going to need to go around too many times because they are tiny. So I've gone under this one. I'm going to go over this one and then under this one and I'm going to pull through gently and I'm going to fix those couple of strands that have decided to go loose. Just got to figure out which one it is. There we go. 
length and the looser you have it the quicker it's going to cover your work I might just move my phone a little bit the quicker it's going to cover your work so the less amount of wraps around you'll need to do so we just went under this one we're now going to go over this one and then under this one and then once I get to the end of it I just slowly pull and that strand is still being difficult come on got one strand of the six that doesn't want to see you can see it sticking out here it doesn't want to stay the same length as the rest so what I need to do is actually like run it all the way up pull it through I've just taken off my needle oh please don't fall just get the the strands to all sit the same there we go alright got my needle threaded again so I went under this one here, I'm going to go over this one and then under this one over here. And again this is a lot easier when you've got, when you're holding the hoop in your hand because I can't, I can't see the spoke. I'm having to like duck and weave behind my camera, and behind my phone I mean. So pull through and I'm happy with how big that one is so now I'll just Pull that just a little tighter. So now I'm going to go instead of I'm going to go over this spoke, and instead of going under the one that's here, I'm actually going to poke into the fabric underneath all of my thread so that it tucks in nicely. And again, we don't want to pull through too quickly or too tight, otherwise, we're just going to undo the work we've done. So that's our teensy little, it looks like a flower, but it's a, our teensy little holly berry and because it's so close to it I'm just going to continue with the same cut of thread I'm going to come up in the middle and then we just start again I'm going to keep going clockwise so it's not so confusing for you guys but I'm going to go under the first one and then we want to so I'm, because I'm going clockwise I would, I'm going to skip this one and then I'm going to go under this one if it's easier for you guys, you can do five spokes and um, probably four strands of floss. Uh, that way you may find that it sits a bit flatter if you're having trouble with that. Alright, so I've gone under this one. I'm going to go over this one and then under this one here. So it's just up and over constantly. Right, I'll get this to sit in the right spot. The middle looks like it's not going to sit properly, but you really don't see the middle once it's done. It's just kind of a foundation. Alright, we've gone under, we're going to go over, and then under this one up here. We need to make sure that we're still going clockwise, so I have to go in from this direction. I've got a cat hair in it. Alright, then under, uh, sorry, over, then under. Over and under. And as you go, just make sure you're sitting it flat so it doesn't look like a little doesn't then it doesn't look like a little French knot basically we want it to sit splayed out a little bit so we're going to go over this one and then under this one and again we're going clockwise so I need to switch to my left hand so I can go under this direction now we're going to go over and under My floss is all twisted. This would be a great time for me to let it hang. But I'll just do what I can. And 
Alright. We've gone under, so now we're going to go over, under. And we're going to do one more. So over and then under. Again, switch into my other hand, making sure that I get under the spoke and not just under the floss. And then to finish it off, I'm going to go over this one here because we just went under here. And instead of going un so over instead of going under here, I'm going to poke in to the fabric underneath all my stitches and pull through. I get it super tangled apparently. All right, and then because that's sitting up over my work, I just need to help it sit properly just with my needle so it sits underneath there we go that's our second one so these are a really good foundation stitch to know in my opinion especially if you're wanting to do sort of freestyle hand embroidery so while I talk I'm just untwisting my floss because um, they're very they're not only a cute little flower in of themselves, but they're actually a good foundation to add other stitches to. And I'm planning on doing a couple of, oh, sorry, I'm slipping in my chair, uh, a couple of embroidery patterns this year that build off of this stitch. All right, I'm going to go under to start with so then over this one and under this one and again to make sure I'm going clockwise I'm going to switch to my left hand if you're holding your hoop you don't have to switch hands you can just um, turn your hoop that's what I do when I'm doing embroidery that's not being recorded just realized I've done it under the wrong one. So to go back under and make sure that you don't pierce your floss, I was going backwards. Did I? Oh no, I was right. Just ahead of myself. My brain needs to catch up. So as I was saying before, I usually stitch five spokes when it comes to this this stitch but when it's this small I like to do just three so if you peruse through my finished pieces you'll see that I've done tiny little flowers on wedding pieces like this uh, those ones like sort of similar size as a finished piece. Those ones I've done like this where it has three spokes. Uh, we'll go under and then poke through to finish it. All right, and that's that little section. Nice and flat, nice and content. It's not really the right word to use, but it is what it is. All right, we, we because that took like no time, we are going to do the, the leaves for it too. So let me just trim off my floss. And it like, it leaves like no floss on the back side, this stitch, which is good. It like doesn't waste any. And... If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I like to try to not waste as much floss as possible. She says as she's got all this sitting here. That was an accident. Okay. Mm, scissors. 
Look at that! Yay! Alright, let's change. We're going to do some leaves now. So that was the wagon wheel, also known as the woven wheel stitch. Now we're going to do the fish bone, fish bone stitch. That's a bit of a mouthful. I've probably said that before, but I don't remember me saying it before. So, Alright, we're going to have four strands of just making sure that I pull out the right colour, of the dark green. Can it come out please? It's stuck on another thing. So we're going to use this green, or whatever green you want. Of course, you don't have to follow my pattern. Mine's just suggestions. And I've got two strands already cut, so what I'm going to do is just use this and fold it in half. Because that will just double the amount of strands. So I put my needle halfway through, take the two ends, and voila, now we have four strands. It does halve it, its um, length, but again, cannot waste, must not waste. I can't change, I've tried to be okay with. throwing out perfectly usable strands of floss and I just I cannot so you have to just deal with me being a bit crazy okay so the fishbone stitch uh, with this because it's not a regular leaf usually fishbone stitch is used for leaves that have like stuff on top of them at the bottom but because this is the whole thing we're going to be doing a fishbone stitch that kind of morphs a little bit so uh, I'll show you what I mean by that on the finished piece so as you can see it's all straight lines here and all straight lines here but the lines are horizontal in the middle so we're going to be starting at one tip and then slowly moving our lines so that they will go over here to finish up with. It sounds it probably sounds a bit more complicated, but uh, than it actually is. But trust me, it's it's easy. So we want to have some kind of little line in the middle to follow. I've done mine a little bit too close, so I'm actually going to start here, come up, and then go in at the top. And then we're going to come up slightly off the line on the left. And then we're going to poke in following this curved line on the right. And then we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to come up slightly further down and on the right side of the line. And then go in on the left. And that's what we're just going to follow the line basically. If you want to, you can do this with two strands of floss. Uh, that'll make it take longer to begin with, but it will give it more of a, um, a flatter look. So because we want to make sure that we have this nice crease in the middle, I'm now not coming down the line as quickly because I need it to catch up on this side. So if you've got any questions, let me know. If you're on Instagram, you can send a message in the the question thingy. So 
So we're starting to get that line to go horizontal. And we kind of want it to get horizontal by the time we hit the middle points. And I'm about to run out of floss. So, because I haven't hit the point on the right side, this is the left side, sorry, I'm going to do one more on the left so that it catches up. Alright, I'm going to cut off that bit of thread. Yeah, I pushed it there. I can't do a knot, so I just got to run through a couple of times. Okay. Come on, phone. Sit where I want you to sit. Do. Alright, I need some more floss. So again, I'm getting four strands. Oh, that's four strands. That's nice. And I'm just doing my knot off camera. Okay. And then we just continue like we we didn't have a a blip in time there. So we just come up in the middle. And now we want to start making the floss come towards us, like point towards us. So we want to, oh that's right, no I just remember what I did. So we want to come up at the end of the line and then basically start the next fishbone end of it, if that makes sense. Because otherwise, and I, I figured this out the hard way while I was stitching it, otherwise uh, the the same kind of look here won't happen here. And now we just basically fill in the little gaps, but we're going the opposite end. Oh, just tried to undo my needle. Again, you can do this with two strands or three strands if you want it to look a bit flatter. That's not a problem. whatever makes you happy basically. We want to make a piece that brings you joy and if doing it slower and uh, more hmm, conscientious 
maybe? Then you go. Okay. So now we're just going to kind of fill in the gap. I'm going to just do some little short stitches. Yep. Come on. There we go. And one more for this side. The lighting's all funny today. Hold on. I think it's because this was on the wrong side. There we go. Hopefully that's a bit better. Oh, it's terrible on Twitch. Okay, hold on. There we go. Lovely. Now we'll do the other leaf. So again, we're going to start on the line and then work our way down. Come on. Ow. Ow. Poked myself twice. Ow. Trying to get this to flatten out a bit more. Better. And again, once we get to the middle points, we want to be for this leaf going vertical. We're doing vertical stitches. I'm tangled on the back. Am I tangled though? Doesn't feel like it. But it also does feel like it. Yeah, I wasn't. I just had too much. Okay, that was very confusing. Again, if you've got questions, let me know.
This one's looking a lot nicer than the other one. Okay, so before we get too far, we're going to start the other end and meet our way into the middle. Had a brain fart there for a second. Forgot what I was doing. How do you choose your fabric? How do you know if the weave is tight enough? Uh, that's a good question. I, I've only just started really learning about um, what kind of fabrics to to use. Do you shop online? Or, I shop online uh, currently, but I've been getting 100% cotton because it's got a very tight weave and because I stitch in a hoop I don't have to worry about it uh, warping or anything like that there's a thing called Kona cotton oh, sorry I don't, not 100% cotton um, Quilter's fabric that's what I meant to say I got way ahead of myself there because um, it's it's floppy but it's rigid enough that it uh, doesn't need stabilizer or anything like that while you're stitching or to, to house the stitchings and because I'm not stitching on clothing I don't need to worry about stabilizer as well I haven't delved into stitching on clothes yet it's something I've considered Just don't know what I'd do to be honest. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, Quilter's fabric has been kind of what I've been going for because I know that it will hold my stitches nicely once I'm all done stitching. So that's that. That was quick. That was a quick day. I'm not going to keep going because everything else is going to take some time. But that's the wagon wheel and the fishbone stitches. This is like an altered fishbone, just remember, uh, because we we started on each end and brought them together. Um, normally, you would draw a leaf, like, I'll just quickly draw a leaf on a piece of paper. A lot of the time it's used for something like this and you would start here and then you just slowly work your way down each side following the middle so this is yeah this is like a an edited version of the fishbone stitch but hopefully that's that's interesting for you guys and hopefully Today's been a nice, easy day, and it was definitely quick. And tomorrow, uh, just a reminder that I will need to make sure that I finish about this time tomorrow uh, because I've got to pick up my kids because they have early dismissal on Fridays. So tomorrow we will do... Sorry, I'm moving both of my cameras. We'll be doing the lights up here, and if that goes too quick then we'll likely start on the trees. So that should be good. So thanks so much everyone for jumping on. Thanks if you're watching on YouTube in the future for watching. 
and hopefully I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye!